Russian specialists will carefully study the design of the German tank Leopard 2. The captured vehicle was delivered to Ural Wagen Zavod for a thorough examination. This was reported by the corporation's press service. A German Leopard 2A6, taken as a trophy in one of the areas of the Special Operations Zone, was delivered to Ural Wagen Zavod, where Russian specialists will work on it. This tank is in a very normal condition. Apparently, it was abandoned by the crew due to some kind of breakdown and was not hit. In any case, it is now in Nizhny Tagil. As reported by Ural Wagen Zavod, the German delivered to the plant has already been put on jacks and disassembly has begun. Based on the results of studying the tank's design, an expert assessment will be issued as well as recommendations for the military. No time frame has been announced. Specialists from the Ural Wagen Zavod concern have begun to dissect the Leopard's units, systems and assemblies. After conducting research and analyzing the results, an expert assessment will be given of the actual military technical level of the various systems and the captured vehicle as a whole, the press service of Ural Wagen Zavod said in a statement. As noted, this is the first German tank that fell into our hands in almost working order. Before that, all captured vehicles arrived with various damages. It seems that soon, Ural Wagen Zavod specialists will get both the American Abrams and the British Challenger too. At the start of the full-scale invasion, Russia was estimated to have around 3,300 operational tanks, suggesting that all those that initially drove into Ukraine and then some have been taken out over the course of two and a half years. It's impossible to know for certain exactly how many tanks Russia has lost during the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, so any figures need to be treated as estimates. An assessment for British defense intelligence earlier this year said Russia had likely lost 2,600 tanks since the start of the full-scale invasion and 4,900 IFVs, a total of 7,500. Figures from the open-source investigative project Oryx put the number of tanks damaged or destroyed at 3,180. As Oryx only publishes visually confirmed data taken from open sources, the real numbers of Russian losses are likely significantly higher. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called the situation on the front lines very challenging following a briefing with high command. The most important thing is to put pressure on Russia using all available means and tools to achieve our goal, Zelensky said in his nightly video address. Everything that can be done this fall, everything we can achieve, we must achieve, he added. Russia's forces are bigger and better equipped than Ukraine's, and in recent months the Russian army has gradually been pushing Ukrainian troops backward in eastern areas. Zelensky visited the United States last week in pursuit of continuing financial and military support as the war approaches its three-year milestone next February. The Ukraine war is Europe's biggest conflict since World War II and has drained the resources of both sides. З усім тим, що ми обговорили в Нью-Йорку та Вашингтоні, і вже готуємось до зустрічі в Рамштайні. Це буде особливий Рамштайн. І від нашої сторони партнери отримують всі деталі, всі аргументи, як забезпечити результати найближчими місяцями і на фронті, і в дипломатичній роботі. Дуже дуже непроста ситуація. Найголовніше тиснути на Росію всіма засобами, всіма інструментами, щоб якнайшвидше досягти нашої мети реального і справедливого миру для України, для всіх наших людей. Все, що можна зробити протягом цієї осені, все, чого ми можемо досягти, ми маємо досягти. І це залежить від кожного в команді України. Saying it was taking unspecified steps to defend itself further. North Korea condemned the United States and its allies Monday for engaging in war games in the Asia-Pacific region and talking unceasingly about regime change in the diplomatically isolated nation. The words from UN Ambassador Kim Song, while sharp, did not appear to represent any notable departure from Pyongyang's usual rhetoric. He spoke on the final day of the UN General Assembly's high-level meeting of world leaders, a day when some of the world's most isolated nations typically take the rostrum alongside a diverse roster of leaders from nations like Canada and the United Arab Emirates. Kim said the United States, 
trying to dominate world affairs, was not acting fairly to the community of nations and was misusing the ostensibly multilateral United Nations for its own ends. Hanegazina 자기한 명칭의 합동 군사 연습들을 연이어 벌려 놓음으로써 지역의 군사적 긴장과 족대적 분위기를 고조시키고 있습니다. 보다 엄중한 것은 지난해 미국과 한국이 조작한 방공화국 핵 전쟁 기구인 핵 협의 그룹화가 본격적으로 가동하고 우리와의 핵 전쟁을 가상한 모의 훈련들이 감행되고 있는 것을 비롯하여. 조선민주주의 인민공화국에 대한 핵 사용 기도가 보다 현실화되고 있는 것입니다. 우리가 핵을 가졌기 때문에 미국이 우리를 적대시 하는 것이 아니라 바로 미국이 70여 년 전부터 조선민주주의 인민공화국을 적대시 하면서 핵 위협을 가해 왔기 때문에 우리가 부득히 핵 보유라는 역사적인 결심을 하지 않으면 안 되게 된 것입니다. 긴장해지면서도 전쟁으로까지 가닿지 않는 것은 전적으로 우리 국가가 강력한 전쟁 억제력으로 침략 위협을 억제하고 지역에서의 힘이 균형을 보장하고 있기 때문입니다. 하기에 우리는 국가 안전 보장에 대한 의무감뿐만이 아니라 지역과 세계의 평화와 안전 유지에 대한 사명감으로부터 전쟁 억제 능력을 계속 향상시켜 나가고 있습니다. 우리는 일개 행정부가 아니라 미국이라는 국가적 실체 그 자체를 대상할 것이며 마찬가지로 미국의 구원도 정권도 달라진 조선민주주의 인민공화국을 상대해야 할 것입니다. 미국과 소방에 의해 3년 가까이 지속되어 오는 우크라이나 사태를 보더라도 그들은 나토의 동진과 동맹국에 대한 천문학적 액수의 살인 장비 제공으로 사태를 조작하고 지속시키면서도 그 책임을 다른 나라들이 전가하고 있습니다. 미국이 다른 나라들이 정상적인 관계 발전을 그토록 악의 사서 비난하는 것도 